Hi guys, I'm Mar, and today I'm really excited because we're gonna talk about one of my favorite things, <laughs> bags. Well, mostly bags, because I've just seen this TikTok where the girl was talking about the difference between a trend, a fad, and a classic, and it really kind of blew my mind, and it got me thinking, and I really wanted to join the conversation. So I'm gonna leave a link to the TikTok that I watched, but I want to talk about what, in my opinion, are some classics, some trendy, some fat luxury items, and what I think are kind of like worth the money but I mostly just want to have a conversation with you guys and I want to ask you guys what your thoughts are if you guys agree with me what you guys think is worth the money what isn't so yeah I just thought this would be fun so if you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel by clicking down there and yeah let's get started so to start I want to talk about the difference between these three and in this video I'm gonna give you guys five examples of each and I think that's a lot because I tend to talk way too much and I didn't want to make the video way too long so yeah the difference between a classic item, a trendy item, and what we would call a fad. And that was the one I was kind of like confused at. I was like, okay, what is this? I actually had to pull up my good old friend, Urban Dictionary. And it says that a fad is an intense and widely shared enthusiasm for something, especially something that is short-lived. So the way I'm kind of looking at it is just something that you see everywhere all of a sudden. And then afterwards, you kind of wonder why. And to me, usually what I'm considering things that are more of a fad are just things that at first when you see them you're like mm, I'm not really sure and then sometimes you find yourself being like oh maybe it's not so bad but then after a few months go by and it's not really trendy anymore or fatty I don't really know what you're supposed to call it you're kind of like oh wow it was bad so I'm just gonna jump from one category onto the next so I'm gonna start with something that I find trendy and that's the Dior saddlebag so the Dior saddlebag was definitely like top of the game the best bag ever and then it kind of got forgotten we were just like confused as to why anyone was walking around with a bag that was like a saddlebag and then now it's super trendy. So it was trendy in the early 2000s and then now it's trendy again. For me, I consider that a trendy bag, a trendy item. I personally own a couple of Dior saddlebags from the ones that have been recently released. I don't really know if they're a good investment. If we were talking about like investments, I feel like that's a completely different video. I feel like the classics are a good investment. Of course, if you bought a Dior saddle in the 2000s now, it probably does have some resale value but you wouldn't really know that it was gonna become a trend or at least as big of a trend as it was gonna become unless you were like a time traveler or something and if you are honey then i got some questions for you i need to know some lotto numbers <laughs> i need to know a lot of things now for a classic i feel like the very first thing i should mention is the chanel classic flap i mean it literally has classic in the name i think a really easy way for you to know what bag is considered classic and which one is considered more of a trend is just to think about whether or not the actual bag or the actual item takes you back to a certain time. So if I think about a Chanel classic flap, I probably can't pinpoint that to a certain time. I can't think about a decade. I can't think about a moment in pop culture. I can't really think about a celebrity wearing it because that bag is just everywhere at all times. So it's a classic. Whereas that definitely wouldn't happen with something that's just trendy or with something that's a fad, most definitely. So for me, the very first thing I wanted to include as a fad is the Gucci belt. I mean, the Gucci belt, honestly, I don't even know if it could just qualify as a fad because it could just be a mistake, an atrocity. There's so many things this Gucci belt could be. But the Gucci belt is actually a really interesting piece. I feel like the Gucci belt started as a trend. It started okay. It was like, oh, everybody kind of liked the Gucci belt. But then we just went overboard. There were too many Gucci belts. The Gucci belt was just everywhere. It was being paired with literally everything. And the Gucci belt just needs to die. It definitely rose in popularity really, really fast. I would argue it just rose with Gucci really, really fast because as you guys know, Gucci, I mean, it's just been crazy with Gucci, especially within the last, I would say maybe like four years, Gucci had like a really crazy rise. But I don't really think that means that every Gucci item is a fad. However, I guess this kind of does lead me on to my next point. And as far as trendy items, I was trying to think of things with the Gucci logo. So the Gucci logo also had a really big moment in the 90s. And then right now we're kind of like back to the whole logo mania moment and the Gucci logo I feel like it was kind of frowned on it was kind of like mm, not that cool for a while and now it's very cool again so I feel like anything with a Gucci logo is kind of considered trendy I was trying to just pinpoint one bag but I feel like I can't I feel like to me basically anything with the Gucci logo everywhere I would consider a trendy item I would definitely not consider it <laughs> 
a classic item, at least for me personally. And I feel like that kind of goes hand in hand with the story of the brand, because if you guys watched that video I did with the rise and fall of Gucci, which is super interesting, I actually, they're making a movie about it. I can't wait for that movie to be released because it's a crazy story. I mean, there's so many things that have gone on behind the scenes of Gucci and it's super interesting because Gucci always kind of seems to have this like big moment and is kind of forgotten about in another big moment. So that's a trendy thing. It's just always like highs and lows. So yeah, I don't know what's more trendy than that. For a classic, I wanted to include a shoe and I was thinking about what shoes classic and there's a lot of shoes that I think could be classic, but I thought Christian Louboutin's So Kate are probably a classic and I'm kind of sad about that. I feel like my feet are crying about this because those shoes are so painful. I mean, just looking at them, I'm in tears almost. I'm just like, oh honey, I can't, I can't handle heels anymore. I mean, I've been living in slippers for over a year at this point. My feet are not even trained for platforms. They are most definitely not trained for So Kate's. But they're a beautiful shoe. Anything you pair them with will be classy and you will also be in tears. For a fat, I don't know if you guys are gonna agree with me on this, but I am sticking with this one, okay? We're gonna just, we might argue, but it's all right. It's all set with love. So I'm gonna put the Giacomo's Le Chiquito. I don't even know what accent I'm supposed to say that in because Chiquito is in Spanish and Le Giacomo's is like in French, but I'm gonna put this bag in the fat because the tiny bags are just, they don't really make sense. They're just a fashion thing. They're definitely fun, but I don't think they're actually trendy. I think about this bag and I'm immediately just my brain just goes to like Fashion Nova and like this whole moment in time. So yeah, for me, it's a fat, but I can understand someone thinking it's trendy. I feel like trendy and fat, there is some overlap there. I just feel like fat is kind of like the more extreme version of trendy. So another item that I think is trendy right this moment is the Prada nylon bag. And I think some people might be telling themselves like, no, this is a classic. It's just like a nylon black bag. I mean, it's going to be a classic. It's going to be around forever. And sure, I guess technically you could wear that bag forever, <laughs> but right now it's a trend. And if you were to wear it, let's say like five years from now, it's probably not gonna be like a cool bag. It's gonna be like an outdated bag. Whereas another bag, maybe like a Chanel boy bag, and that was actually my next classic bag, it wouldn't be considered like a, oh, like that bag used to be trendy. It would still be a cool bag. So yeah, next classic bag I wanted to include is the Chanel boy bag. And that bag has actually not been around for that long. So the boy bag has been around since 2011. And I feel like it pretty quickly became like a classic. I don't know if every Chanel piece is a classic. I will say that Chanel is a brand, is a classic. I mean, if you buy something from Chanel, it's a classic, of course, but there are some pieces out there that are more like, more so trendy, of course, because of course every brand has some pieces that are considered just like a little bit more trendy than others. And that's, yeah, totally fine. The Chanel boy bag is actually one of my favorites. I know some people don't like boy bags and I never understand them. I'm always like, how? I feel like the boy bag is so cute. I feel like she's like a young bag, but also classic, but just fun. I don't know. You guys tell me if somebody doesn't like a boy bag, let me know why. Cause I, I love boy bags. Okay. So for my next fat item, I feel like I'm saying fat, but I'm saying fat with a D, but yeah. So my next one is basically anything from the Supreme Louis Vuitton collection. So if you got something from this collection, when it first came out, it was like the coolest thing you could get. I mean, I almost feel like I would just say Supreme as a whole, but I'm going to be a little bit more specific and say Supreme Louis Vuitton. That had like its big moment and now it's just gone. <laughs> I feel like if you got something from that collection, I'm, I'm sorry. I feel like your money was not that well invested. Now, another trendy bag, and this one might be a little bit controversial. I'm sorry. And I want to put the Balenciaga motorcycle bag. So this bag, I think some people might consider a classic. Personally, I think it's more of a trendy bag because it was very trendy and then I think it kind of mm, it kind of went out of style for a little while there but I mean I could see it going either way I feel like it's a bag that's kind of like a trendy bag making its way towards a classic maybe perhaps actually I don't know how I feel about this one I feel like it's more towards a trendy bag but you guys tell me how you feel so for my next classic choice the Lady Dior and I feel like the Lady Dior is of course a classic is like a very obvious choice like if you want a bag that's gonna be pretty timeless a Lady Dior is a great way to go I also feel like it's pretty like the price is a pretty good price. It's cheaper than Chanel. So I think it's, you know, it's good. Oh, and speaking of price, I mean, of course I could sit here and be like, oh, and of 
course, a Birkin is the most classic bag of all the classics. But I just feel like a Birkin is just not realistic. It's so expensive and it's so hard to get. So a Birkin is not included in my list because <laughs> we're poor. I mean, that's not really the reason why, although I mean, price, hello. But I do feel like Hermes is like a whole nother monster. <laughs> it's a whole nother video. So my next bat is the Balenciaga sock sneakers. <laughs> and I feel like these are the perfect examples. I mean, Cardi B literally sang about them. And when you sing about something, then you're literally defined by that song and by the moment in time that song came out and what people were doing when they were listening to the song. And that's without even talking about how those shoes were like so trendy, how everybody was wearing them, how they were like in every single Instagram picture. So I mean, I guess those shoes might make a comeback because they were such a big thing. I guess they could make a comeback in like 20 years. I mean, I saw that Et Hardy might be making a comeback, so never say never. Hey, even Blue Eyeliner made a comeback. Okay, so for my last trendy bag, I decided to put the Givenchy Antigona bag. So this bag, I feel like most people forgot it existed. I don't know. This was my favorite bag like in 2015. I loved this bag. I took everywhere. I was obsessed with it. It was so comfortable. It just fit all my stuff. It was so beautiful. She was just perfect. But recently, she's just kind of been forgotten about. But honestly, I definitely feel like this bag might become a classic one day. I don't know if I'm only saying that because I love this bag so much, but I feel like it might. You guys tell me what you think. I think there's a possibility there just because of the way it's made, the way it's structured. I feel like, yeah, I think so. Now my next classic choice. So for sure, I thought including something from Louis Vuitton was necessary because I mean, it's such a big, important brand. And I got to thinking, what? And I thought about my first purchase, which was a Neverfull. I think a Neverfull is a lot of people's first like actual back purchase, but I don't know if a Neverfull is considered a classic. So I think there's a question that I hand off to you guys. What do you think? Is a Neverfull a classic? I feel like it is, but I don't really know if that should be your first Louis Vuitton bag. I do think it's a good entry bag, more people can afford it, but also I don't know if the first bag that you get from Louis Vuitton should maybe be a bag that's like better to also wear at nighttime, just like a smaller bag. So I don't know if that would be better to include in the classic section. I think all these questions are more for like a different video. If you're thinking of like, oh, what should be my first bag if I'm buying like a designer item or what bags should I buy if I want them to like hold on to their value? Like what are the best bags for the money? You know, I feel like all of these are like good questions, but I feel like that's not what this video is about. So as far as an example of a classic bag, I feel like Louis Vuitton Neverfull is a classic bag. I think so. I feel like with bags, there's not that many fads. Just just because they're more expensive. So bags are kind of either a trend or a classic. They're not really a fad just because they just don't get that trendy that quickly because they're expensive. I mean, I think bags are really expensive. I don't know. But shoes, on the other hand, there's so many examples. I could probably do a whole video just on shoes. But my last pick is going to be the Gucci embellished sneakers. They looked like marble threw up on them. I was honestly confused. I actually went with my friend to the store and she was buying them. And I was just like, I mean, I didn't see it. I, I didn't see what the appeal of them was. I saw a lot of people wearing them. I mean, I never saw what they saw in them and I still don't really see it. But yeah, those were my picks. Honestly, I could go on and on and on about this, but you guys let me know what your opinions are. But before you guys leave, I have a question for you and that's Cartier love bracelets. I was thinking about this for a while and I was just like... I don't know. I mean, I don't know if they're trendy. I don't know if they're classic. I feel like they're classic, but I also feel like they're just like a trend, but they're also a very expensive trend and they've been around for a long time. So I don't know. I honestly, I have no idea what I would say about not even, yeah, mostly love bracelets, but just kind of like the entire love collection. I don't know. I feel like I need help in that department. But yeah, you guys tell me what your thoughts are because I have no idea. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.